Imagine a patient comes into your clinic with a blood pressure of 138 over 86. Last year, you might have managed them one way, but under the 2025 AHA ACC hypertension guidelines, your approach could look very different. In this video, we'll walk through what's changed and how these updates will impact your practice. Hypertension is the most prevalent and modifiable risk factor for cardiovascular disease, contributing to coronary artery disease, heart failure, atrial fibrillation, stroke, dementia, chronic kidney disease, and increased all-cause mortality. Most cases of hypertension are essential hypertension. In clinical practice, the most common causes of secondary hypertension include obstructive sleep apnea, primary aldosteronism, atherosclerotic renal artery stenosis, and drug or alcohol use, rare conditions such as pheochromocytoma, coarctation of the aorta, and Cushing syndrome account for only about 0.1% or fewer of cases. Current guidelines recommend an overarching blood pressure goal of less than 130 over 80 for all adults. Patients should take two readings, one minute apart, twice a day, two readings in the morning, after releasing the bladder and before taking medication and eating, and two readings at bedtime before sleep. Patients should monitor their blood pressure for at least three days, but ideally seven days, before their next appointment. They should record daily readings and share the results with their clinician. Blood pressure is categorized based on average blood pressure measurements, as in normal, elevated, stage 1, or 2 hypertension. Normal blood pressure is defined as systolic of less than 120 and diastolic of less than 80. Elevated blood pressure is defined as a systolic between 120 to 129 with a diastolic of less than 80. Stage 1 hypertension is systolic between 130 to 139 or diastolic between 80 to 89. Stage 2 hypertension is a systolic at least 140 or diastolic of at least 90. For patients diagnosed with hypertension, recommended initial evaluation includes lab testing such as CBC, serum electrolytes, serum creatinine, A1C or fasting glucose, TSH, urinalysis, as well as urine albumin to creatinine ratio. A 12-lead ECG is also advised. Cuffless blood pressure devices are not recommended for the diagnosis or management of hypertension. In patients with untreated office blood pressure readings of at least systolic of 130 or diastolic of at least 80, but not exceeding systolic of 160 or diastolic of 100, it is reasonable to exclude white coat hypertension with out-of-office blood pressure monitoring before confirming the diagnosis of hypertension. In patients with resistant hypertension, screening for primary aldosteronism is recommended regardless of the presence or absence of hypokalemia. For initial screening of primary aldosteronism, obtain ratio of plasma aldosterone concentration to plasma renin activity, a PAC over PRA of at least 20, with a PAC of 15 is considered a positive result. Keep in mind that most antihypertensive medications, except for mineral corticoid receptor antagonists like spironolactone, should be continued prior to screening to minimize barriers or delays in testing. For all adults, lifestyle changes include healthy weight, heart-healthy pa eating pattern like the DASH diet, reducing sodium intake, increasing dietary potassium intake, adopting a moderate physical activity program, managing stress, and reducing or eliminating alcohol are all recommended. For adults with overweight or obesity, a weight loss of at least 5% of body weight is recommended. A heart-healthy eating pattern such as the DASH diet is recommended for all adults regardless of whether they have hypertension. In adults with or without hypertension, reduction of dietary sodium intake is recommended to be less than 2,300 mg per day, moving towards an ideal limit of less than 1,500 mg per day. Adults, whether or not they have hypertension, should be advised to abstain from alcohol when possible. If not, intake should be limited to no more than one drink per day for women and two drinks per day for men. In adults with or without hypertension, increasing physical activity through a structured 
exercise program that includes aerobic exercise and or resistance training is recommended. In adults with stage 1 hypertension, averaging blood pressure of at least 130 over 80, if the 10-year predictive cardiovascular risk is less than 7.5% defined by the PREVENT calculation, we recommend lifestyle modifications for 3 to 6 months. If the blood pressure remains elevated after 3 to 6 months, then that's when we consider initiating medication therapy. In adults with stage 1 hypertension, and if the 10-year predictive cardiovascular risk is at least 7.5%, the recommendation is to immediately initiate med medication therapy in addition to lifestyle modification. But also keep in mind, if the patient already has an established clinical cardiovascular disease, prior stroke, diabetes, or chronic kidney disease, initiate medication therapy regardless of the 10-year risk. Stage 2 hypertension is defined as systolic of at least 140 or diastolic of at least 90. For these patients, initiation of blood pressure therapy with two first-line agents from different classes, preferably as a single pill fixed dose combination, is recommended over prescribing two separate pills as this improves adherence and shortens the time to blood pressure control. Severe hypertension in non-pregnant adults defined as a blood pressure of at least 180 over 120 without any evidence of acute target organ damage should be managed in the outpatient setting with initiation, reinstitution, or intensification of oral antihypertensive therapy. And lastly, what is the best approach for treating resistant hypertension? Make sure that the patient is evaluated for obstructive sleep apnea, primary aldosteronism, and atherosclerotic renal artery stenosis. For most patients with resistant hypertension, consider spinolactone as the add-on therapy. Thank you and have a good day.